Good morning. Is this one working? Oh, there we go. Good morning, boys and girls. How many of you celebrated late last night, the new year? Awesome. Oh, There's a lot of you, and I'm so surprised to see a lot of you here this morning. Um, we had a really good time with our family last night, and um, I see Ben's laying down. Why don't you get up, bud? Well, so what we've been talking about up until Christmas time is um, how God came um, as a baby to come to this earth so he could be our Savior. But we're going to go back in this, um, this morning, we're going to go back in a story that takes place a long time before that. So we're going to go ahead and travel back and learn something really precious about God and really awesome. But before I get started, if we can just go ahead and close our eyes and pray. If you want to lift your hands to the Lord or keep them in your lap, however you want to do that, we're going to pray and invite God and the Holy Spirit to come. Dear Lord, this morning I pray as we learn more about you, Lord, that you will just open our hearts, Lord, and that more seeds and more learning and more understanding of how amazing you are, Lord, can grow in our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. So we're going to talk, we're going back into the time of Moses. And as you know, you remember the plagues and he, um, and all the plagues that came and finally Pharaoh let the people come out of slavery. They had been in slavery for hundreds of years, crying out to the Lord for deliverance. And Moses came, I know I went through this with my kids all summer, we talked about the exodus. So Moses came, all the people, remember they crossed the Red Sea, remember that? And they, and God is bringing these people to himself so they can worship him. He is so excited. And they are coming out. They're so excited to come out of slavery. And then we find that they kind of start getting complaining. And they start whining and grumbling. But God has something really important for them. Today we're going to kind of talk about rules and why we have rules. Can someone tell me, raise your hand, why do we have rules? Yes, in the blue dress. To keep us safe. Yes, Sam. We would be hopeless, kind of, without rules. Can you imagine if there was no rules in church? We would be running around. No one would be listening. We would be, you know, tickling our friends. I, you know, um, if we didn't have rules. But we all know when we come to church and someone's speaking, we listen. We know how we behave. How many of you in your family, you have, this, you have family rules? You have family. Your parents have given you family rules. What are some family rules? Not running in house and not playing with knives in the Yes, not playing with knives in the kitchen. What are some other family rules, Cheyenne? Um, not, play with okay, not playing with lighters. Yes, that's a, what's another important family rule? Yes, you can't jump off the bed. And what is one more family rule? Don't play with cigarettes. Yes, don't play with cigarettes. Now, how many of you guys are in different clubs, maybe Awanas or Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts? And when you go, do you have rules there? Yeah. Yes, you follow rules. When you go to your club, you start behaving in a certain way because you know when you go to this club, you've got to behave a certain way. When you come to church, there's rules. When you go home, there's rules. There's rules. And they are so important and, um, because they're for our protection and they're to, to protect us. God was so excited about the children of Israel. When they came out of slavery, he was so excited about them. He says, I, he wanted them to come and worship him, but he wanted to give his people, he says, you are my treasured possessions. We were just talking about treasured possessions, and some of you said um, on one service it was cats and their dogs and their toys, but you know what God said? He said, my people are my most treasured possession. Isn't that amazing? We are his most treasured possession. And um, one of the things to kind of give you an example, I remember when I was little and we would be getting ready for a Christmas dinner and my mom would get out this wooden box, this silverware, and she would open up this wooden box. And inside was this silver, real silver, silverware. And she would bring it out once a year and we would put it around the table, around some fancy plates. This was our special silver. I knew 
when this silverware was coming out, we were going to have a special meal. Now, this silverware, which my kids see every day, um, is plastic silverware. You guys see plastic silverware? Do we use plastic silverware for really special dinners? Not usually. Maybe when we're camping or picnicking or when mom doesn't want to do the dishes. This is when the plastic silverware comes out. But this is silver, silverware. This is special. It's different. And when God, when he called the children of Israel, and, and you know we're part of that family, he, called, he says, you are my precious, prized, special people, and I have something for you. I have something very special for my people because I love you so much. Do you know what those were? They weren't spoons. <laughs> no. God wanted to give his children, his people, some rules and guidelines. And so he says, I want to come down. He says, Moses, I want to come down and I want to give my people something. It's very important. But if they're going to behold my presence, they need to go home. They need to bathe. I'm going to come down this mountain. I'm going to come down this mountain, and I'm going to give my people something. And so the people, they had to bathe themselves and clean themselves, and they set these parameters around Mount Sinai, these parameters, and God's like, the people, they cannot go past this parameter. They cannot come and touch this mountain because if they touch this mountain, they're going to die. And whoever touches them will die because the presence of God is so powerful. People cannot handle it. That's why, you know, he came down with his son, Jesus Christ, and as a savior, you know. But before that, God was, um, he had a presence that people could not behold, but he wanted to give his people something. So he's, so he has this mount. He says, I'm going to come down and I'm going to give them something. So as the people preparing and they're waiting, the mountain starts trembling. The whole mountain is trembling and God is coming down like fire and it is covered in smoke. And these trumpets are piercing trumpet sounds. And God is like, no one can come up here except for you, Moses, you come on up. So Moses goes up, and God gives the Ten Commandments to his people. Because he says, I love them so much. They're my treasured people, and I have some rules for them. Rules and guidelines, boys and girls. Is that to be mean? No. It's done out of love for your protection, for your guidance. Because he says, you are my treasured. You are my treasured people. And boys and girls, when we're in Christ, we're part of that treasured possession of God, right? So we obey him, and we follow the guidelines that God gives us in the Bible. So I want to go through, in kid language, some of the um, Ten Commandments. I know you can't probably see up here, but I'll just read them out loud, okay? So we have number one, put God first. Number two, worship God only. Number three, Use God's name with respect. Remember God's Sabbath. Respect your parents. Do not hurt other people. Be faithful in marriage. Do not steal. Do not lie. And do not be jealous of other people. Aren't those good rules? And I want to encourage you, boys and girls, because sometimes today... In the world that we're living, people don't want to follow rules. They don't like rules. And sometimes children, they don't want to obey school rules. They don't want to obey their teachers. They don't want to obey their parents. They don't want someone telling them what to do. And that is not, is that how we live in God? We're just people, no. We know better. We are God's treasured people. We're called to be different. We're called to live with what the Bible says and to be different because we know that our Heavenly Father loves us so much. Isn't that amazing? All right, so I'm going to let you guys go. Thanks so much for listening. You guys did a good job.
Hello, hello. Hey, hang on just one second, kindergarten. I'm going to pray for you guys before you head back, all right? Let's go ahead, just right where you are. We'll fold our hands and close your eyes and talk to Jesus right now. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for letting us